Hi, this is Sergeant Beast Larson. What kind of weapons and preparation do you have on your person, your vehicle, your home, for your family? As officers, those in uniform, first responders, even civilians, you know, this is our third week now or so after the beginning of this war in Israel, this Hamas. Last night, a mass shooting, um, an American citizen, you know, the suspect of interest is a 40-year-old firearms instructor with mental health issues. Okay, number one, how can he still remain being a firearms instructor and in certification with mental health issues? Are we checking? There should be a extra verification status through that. I'm not a firearms instructor. I don't know. Just saying. But what do you do? How do you how do you go about your day in life and prepare for family? I carry my Glock 22, two extra clips. I'm in my vehicle, as you can see. Uh, I have a pump shotgun also in my vehicle with about 100 rounds. Maybe two to 300 rounds. Uh, I don't want to tell you exactly for my Glock in here. Enough. I'm not afraid to use my front bumper if needed. About five or six machetes, about a dozen pocket knives scattered around through here, um, lock and blade knives, uh, three pair of scissors, and a can of wasp spray that can spray 22 feet from Home Depot, five bucks. A hammer, let me think what else, can of mace up here um, in the console under my arm. Now let me explain too, I'm also a retired police. Uh, I have a carry concealed permit through the state of Kentucky. I also have a Leosa card, um, which is from being retired police uh, under the Patriot Act of 9-11. So that allows me to carry in, in places that carry concealed people can't. So I have two cards, so extra. What do you carry in your car? My, my daughter that works in a hospital, she's got a hammer. We went to the dollar store. I said, you don't have a license. You're not, you know, for a permit, but you can have basic things in your car. So she got a basic tack hammer, a couple screwdrivers, long screwdrivers, you know, like seven, eight, nine inch long, you know, screwdrivers, a good crescent wrench, good long wrench. She's got, uh, I think two cans of mace that I've bought her, you know, stuff in the door pocket, stuff in the console and the trunk, because you're, you're always going to the trunk for groceries, for packaging purse. You go to the mall and you want to hide items. You come out of the mall, you need to go and somebody in your grocery store, they approach you. You need to have something trunk and by your doors, wherever you're going to gain access with from your key fob or your key. You need to have something there you can grab them if possible. Just some, some thoughts for you. Why do I have all this? I only have two hands. Well, my wife has two hands. I have two teenagers. They both have two hands. That's eight hands with four of us. So I got enough things in a car to occupy eight hands in case... You know, the poop hits a fan. That's my thinking. Better to have extra. What do you have around your house? Well, I got a lot of guns. You know, I'm retired police. Uh, I've been a SWAT guy, so you know I've got stuff scattered through the house. A couple unique things. You know, everybody's got kitchen knives and that. I've got a huge dog that doesn't like, like strangers coming to the house. He's really big. Has a lot of big teeth. Big ones. Bigger than this snaggle tooth down here that people say in the comments but he when he looks at you and shows your teeth you know he's about to bite you enough said behind my couch i live in a bi-level i know that it's seven steps up and i practice this lights out blindfold myself seven steps up six steps down you need to know this how do you navigate in your house you go upstairs the bi levels the living room got a couch you know what's behind my couch not guns I got four dumbbells back there between 20 and 65 pounds. I use them when I'm watching good movies, Rocky and Rambo, stuff like that. Working out, watching TV on the couch, lay on the floor, working out with dumbbells. But if somebody was to come to my front door that I didn't appreciate and they want to break in, while, while I'm going to retrieve a, a firearm that's close or my wife is, somebody is, I'm going to chunk a couple dumbbells down at their head. You break into my house, you're going to eat some lead, dumbbell, lead. And you're not going to pick it up and throw it back at me. And if you do bend over, that's your fault. Because I'm on top of you physically or with, with 40 caliber lead. You see what I mean? How do you prepare your back doors, your windows, windows on the ground levels? What about your family? Your spouses, your children, anybody that's living there with you, parents, in-laws, anything. Do they know is there an emergency plan in your house with weapons? How do you protect yourself? 
you know, we keep getting these warnings and I'm going to wrap this video up here real quick. I just want you to think this is a day in a life for me, Sergeant Beast Larson. We have plans. We have a plan. If I like I'm for instance, I'm out, I'm in the car, hit a deer, get an appraisal here from my vehicle for insurance. Wife's at home. If something was to go down here in town where we're going to be separated, we can send a code to each other. We know where to go to meet. We're not going to spell it out and have everybody see and find out and hear and read it. It's in our head. We know where we're going. You need to have a rendezvous point, a meetup, a rally point for emergencies. How do you plan who's going to do what in your house? You know, they've talked about this Hamas coming in into the borders. You know, we've got this already talked about the mass shooting last night. We've, we've had several mass shootings prior to this month to three weeks ago. But I, I do believe they will increase. And if you're like me and you've been in the military and, and worked for different government agencies for 30 years, you've seen what's happened the last few years. You're skeptical and you're a little bit unbelievable that they're going to actually do the job and protect. They're not protecting the borders, obviously. They're, they're claiming they're coming in. And I love this. I'm not going to share the picture. You all saw it on Newsweek and everywhere. And it showed the five people and they talked about Hamas trained soldiers coming in the northern border of Canada. But it's kind of blurry. So I asked my wife, I said, who does this look like in a picture? And she's like, I, I don't know. I said, well, does that look like a guy? And that looks like maybe his mother, because it looked like female stature, older, kind of leaned over a hair. Two guys behind him and a female next to him. So there's, there's a blurry picture. It looks like three males and two females, a younger and older. And they're saying they're Hamas trained coming in. And the caption... Hamas terrorists coming in our border with a blurry picture. Now, really, that could be anybody on a camping trip. They could be at the Red River Gorge in Kentucky, down there, you know, drinking and smoking some some good weed or something. You know, it's Kentucky; they do grow a lot. So this, you got to understand this this news, how accurate it is or not. Take it for what you will. Don't get stressed out, but be vigilant. Every single day, there's five more retired Green Beret Special Force hostage terrorists taking everything blank 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 the alphabet everything you know all these federal agencies that are saying there's an increased threat so i've heard at least 50 people now say there's an increased threat in the united states okay i'm going to tell you now so 51 i'm telling you sergeant beast larson says there's an increased threat it's been that way for years i'm just going to say it again i want you to protect yourself and your family when you become a part of the blue family you never leave it. Even retired, working anywhere else, you never leave it. One more thing, um, Steve Maynard, my good buddy here, he, he's former corrections officer, guardian RF, RFID. Sorry, Steve, I know my shirt's backwards at, on this recording. I, I had the camera this way. Nine Lives Apparel. I wear a lot of shirts, Nine Lives Apparel with the flag on there. This is, this is the last point I want to make. You know, a mass shooter enters some place and he wants to start shooting it up. He's not going to really look to say, oh, hey, this guy's got an American flag on there. Uh, duh. He might have a gun. I better back up. They're coming in to be stupid. But outside of that area where you go, maybe he sees you getting out and you're walking into that place he's about to go in. Think about what you wear. I tend to wear a lot of things that talk about, you know, guardian or protection. Certain words on here. You know, I have a lot of T-shirts that say beast. I come walking in with a beast shirt on and probably an open carry where everybody sees me carrying a gun. It says beast on here. And I got that look like they're thinking that guy might shoot back. Sometimes your presence, and I made a great video about officer presence. Sometimes your presence is key, you know, when you're in public. It's it's nice to look good. I like to wear a shirt and tie. I'm older. I'm, I'm out of the uniform now. I dress up a little bit, dress, act my age. Went out with my wife last weekend for her 50th birthday. Did not wear black, nothing with names or labels on there. Had a nice polo shirt on, dress pants, and dress shoes on. I dressed that way. Had a gun underneath my shirt. Yes, I did. Had my Glock 22. Think about how you dress. It's not always your appearance for TikTok and influencer. It's not always an appearance for that, we're not dressing up to look good for people to say, hey, that guy looks great. Let me throw some money at him. Sometimes you need to dress to let people know that you mean business.
if they get in your face. That's what I'm saying. It is a dangerous day. It's a dangerous world. I just hit the 10 minute mark here. I want to let you all go. Thank you. Be safe. Make plans. Talk to your family, your children. Make them aware. My kids know how to shoot guns. They know how to use a knife. They've watched my videos. They've been in some of my videos with ski masks on. It's not new to them. Nothing I say in, in my house is a surprise anymore. Not for years. Take care of your family. God bless.